Hello, welcome to the Mac Collision Alert talk. My name is Eddie. I'm working at Red Hat uh, on, on OpenShift virtualization. It's a, in upstream, it's called Covers. Um, and I wanted to talk today about uh, Mac collisions, but in essence, I, I'm more or less uh, um, focusing on trying to think about things a bit different, in a different way. And this talk is a bit uh, special because whatever we are going to speak here about the alternative solutions, they are not really e existing. It's like, it's, a, it's, it's still open. We, I like to do it, but uh, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe there are better ideas, so you're all welcome to, to comment on it. So the first thing that I wanted to say is that a lot of solutions that we are doing, uh, I don't know, it's, some, it's like an engineering uh, practice to complicate things a little bit more than it must. And it causes a lot of afterwards uh, complications. So it, it will be very nice to, after we have something running, working, uh, we did it very fast, and after a few years, we can look back and see if we could have uh, maybe simplified it a little bit. Especially after a few years, things are getting, uh, many things go, are added and it gets more complicated. So what I, what I would like to talk today is about, first of all, I will give some context. Uh, who knows here about Kubernetes? Everyone. Who knows about Kubernetes? Ah, most of you. Um, so I'll go over very quickly. I already had a talk with uh, Andrea that is here, and I did the same thing, so I will be very, very quick about it. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, why or what is this MAC address uh, management thing, and the ex what we have today, uh, how we manage it today, and what maybe could be an alternative to it. So the ecosystem, some background. We had in the, in the beginning a virtual machine, it's a simple thing. Then we had many, on many nodes. So we had to manage them. That's the regular thing that we do. And then came the containers. Then we also had many of them and then we managed them. And the result of that came Kubernetes, which manages pods, which are actually behind them, uh, we have containers, and COVID came along and we merged them together, so we'll have one unified uh, ecosystem and management system. Um, and now, a few words about MAC address management. So, why do we need it? Can anyone tell me why we need to manage MAC addresses? It sounds odd because usually, if you know what's a MAC address, usually the manufacturer of a card are just putting it on the physical link and that's it. You don't need to manage anything. Yes? It needs to be unique. Yes, unique. So, so th this is usually not a, p most of the time it's not a problem when the manufacturer is doing that, although it's, I didn't know it uh, in the past, but manufacturers do create duplicate uh, MAC addresses. They just send them to the other side of the world or things like that. Um, so that's one of them. And do you, do you, can you think about why we need it in VMs specifically? Yes. Because the MAC address gets generated when VM is created? Yes, and, yes, and? <laughs> and, one? So, yes, that's a uniqueness one, right? But the, the reason in virtual machine that we want, the, we want also to manage it is because when we create the virtual machine and we shut it down and we start it again, it may come up with a different MAC address. So we want to avoid that. Uh, it's especially a problem in, when we run it in Kubernetes because we run virtual machine in pods. And when you create a new pod, it gets a new interface which may have a, a different MAC address unless we somehow manage it or tell it to use a specific address. Um, 
So that's the persistent part. The persistent part is that we want, once the virtual machine was created with uh, some one or more NICs, virtual NICs, we want the MAC address to be there forever, not to change. Um, also for migration, but that's a small detail. We'll not get too into it. Um, and the second one is said that we want uniqueness, so we want to avoid MAC address duplication and we'll talk about it a bit later, um, more in details about it. Um, so, what is MAC address duplication? Is anyone here knows why there is a problem with MAC address duplication? What's the problem having two MAC addresses? Oh, I will try to make it fast. Uh, you want you want an answer? Yes, it, it, in a, if you, so I will show you here why it's a problem. It's like a very simple use case. Um, if, let's say that you have two pieces, uh, Mac A and Mac B. They are connected to a switch. The switch has a Mac table, and the Mac table has ports on, on one side and the Mac address that it learned on the other side. Uh, when a switch usually learns the Mac address, I'm talking only about switches, hubs is like a, two generations behind us, so I'm not talking about it. So in switches, MAC address, uh, switches learn about MAC address. When some traffic goes into the switch, it looks at the source MAC, so it just learns it and put it in its table. So in this case, we have A and B. It learned it on two different uh, ports. Now, if, if we have uh, the two pieces having the same MAC address, so it will, let's assume it learned it in port one, and then traffic came from the second machine, so it learned it on port two, and then it goes like this forever. It, it, it's not able to put the same entry on both of them. Usually the classic switches will not do that. Moreover, the regular the switches that we have today will just block it. One of the ports, it will detect one of the ports as, uh, as problematic, and you just uh, block that port so, so you will not have a problem in your network. Because it may assume it's there you have a loop, like a cable, uh, which will cause you a lot of trouble. So what can we do if we, what can we do if, if we have this, uh, this situation? We need to somehow manage this, not to, have, not to get into this, uh, this case. So obviously, we will manage it. <laughs> That's, uh, we all, all we have a solution to manage stuff. So, the solution that we have today um, is one of them is prevention. Uh, this is what we have today, and we will, I will go over it today, so we'll know. And um, when it solves what we spoke yes, uh, before, like uh, the, um, the problem with uniqueness and the problem of having it uh, permanent. Oh. So prevention. So we have, this is a very simpl a simplification of uh, a tool that we, uh, not a tool, it's a product today, it's called Kumekpool. It is sitting in a, in a Kubernetes cluster. It has a controller, uh, everyone knows what's a controller by the way? Kubernetes controller. No? Yes. Uh, I will, no one answers, so I'll answer it. Uh, a controller is something that looks on the, on the system in a, in a loop. So we just check it uh, if the system is as desired. So in Kubernetes, the concept is that you specify what you want and you have what exists and it tries to reach from desired state to actual state, to, to move it to be an actual state. So that's what controllers do. They usually look at at the uh, configuration and at the actual thing that exists there. And the webhook, does anyone know what's a webhook in Kubernetes? No? So a webhook is, um, it's, it's an endpoint, a web a URI endpoint, I would say, that you can configure Kubernetes that when, a, when you change the, the manifest of an object, it will just redirect it you will be redirected to that uh, webhook. That webhook can do two things mainly. They, today it supports two things. One is 
it can validate the configuration. So if the, val if the validation is not okay, it will just drop it and, and the manifest will not be preserved in the database, in Kubernetes database. And, uh, and the other thing, it can change it. You have a way to change, you have another step that it, you can change that configuration and then it will be saved. So given that we have that, and we have a pool of uh, MAC addresses, we create a manifest, and the controller obviously looks at that uh, configuration. This is the VM manifest that describes how VM should look like. And the web, web request trigger is as soon as we created that manifest. So it goes there, and it's, it's tried to go to uh, the validation step. So it checks in the, in the pool that if the, this MAC address is, exists, if not, it can register it. And if that passed, it does two things. One is it mutates the manifest to put the MAC address there. So it solves the problem of the persistency in that manifest. And it tells the, it causes the pod with the virtual machine to be created with that specific MAC. Um, now the case that it doesn't work if it, when, it, when there is a problem of duplication. So someone can use the manifest and specify a specific MAC address. So if someone specifies a specific MAC address, then it will get to the webhook. The webhook will check with the database, with the pool, and it will see that it's, or, uh, it, it's already there, so it will reject it. And that will cause it to just drop the I mean, it will just fail the, the creation of that um, manifest. So the pod will not be created. The VM will not be created. Now, this is what we have today, and it works pretty well. The problem is that when something else happens, it doesn't work so well. So um, one of the uh, nice things that I like about the existing solution is that it's not intrusive to the VM, to the VM system. It's, it's external. It just monitors. Uh, what happens, so if there is a problem, it will just stop it and that's it. You don't need a special parameter inside your VM manifest. I mean, VM control plane and everything does not need to know about this kubmec pool thing. But there are still our problems. So the first problem is that we are, uh, this mechanism is just blocking creation of virtual machines. So if, let's say, a situation that you, you have one virtual machine created with a specific Mac, and then you create another virtual machine with the same Mac, I don't know why, then if, if that's happened, immediately it stops and the VM will not, never be created. But it's a bit anti-Kubernetes in the sense that you, you describe what you want, and maybe in uh, 10 seconds the other VM will go down, but you could not you could not do the what you you could not reach the your actual state because it you just get fo immediately failed. So, so it it doesn't allow you to say I want this and eventually it I it will happen. I cannot describe uh, do that in, if with this tool at this moment. Uh, the o another limitation is that it works only for virtual machines. So if you have uh, if you need it also for just pods or something else that works with pods, it doesn't work. Um, but although there was a, there was an attempt to do it, but eventually it didn't. It also has a, one thing that it has only a single pool. What does it mean? It means that we can have two different m uh, networks, and each network can have a different local address. Uh, it can have a broadcast domain of its own. So in this case, I will not expect, even if there is duplication, it still should work. But this one uh, treats everything as, as a single LAN. And just managing this, uh, the whole thing is a bit complicated because if we look uh, here, then the con uh, once do you pass through the webhook, you still need a controller because the webhook may have worked and everything work fine, but there may be another webhook that will fail your machine. So it will fail the creation of virtual machine, and then you want to give the Mac back but, uh, to the pool. But then you need the, the controller. So it gets a bit complicated. And this is the main thing that I, I actually, the only reason that I did this talk is about this, uh, this case. 
the probability for, for a Mach duplication is really, really slim. It's like we are doing all of these fancy things. We, we spend a lot of energy and a lot of code to, to make it happen. But uh, what is the probability of really having a duplication of Mac addresses in a, in a cloud system where some of the interfaces are, uh, are provided through some SDN thing or or some other uh, means, the probability, I guess, is like very, very slim. So then what can we do to, what can we do different? That's the question. So one of the things that we could do different is to think about this problem in, uh, from a Kubernetes perspective. We want to facilitate the, the, the collision, if there is a collision, and which means that we can let it happen and if it happens, then we, we can try to detect it and then do something about it. Now, there is a very, very low chance that it will happen, so, so we'll, we'll not have the, the blocking problem that we always have. I didn't say before, but one of the things that we did experience is when this service that provides this webhook is down, then the creation of VMs cannot, be ha cannot happen. So that's also a nasty thing. Well, this is related to this uh, sentence that I really like. Is um, it's it's actually taken from many Python. Pythonists are using it a lot. I I did program in Python in the past, so it's easier to ask for guesses than permission. Do you know this sentence? No, it's it's uh, usually solves a lot of races. Like, for example, you ask a question: Is the is the file open? And then you open it, right? But in between the asking the question and actually opening, uh, trying to open the file or doing something on it, someone may have uh, done something else in the middle. So it's a regular race condition. So in order to, to try to, s one of the options to solve the previous problem is to separate the two things about uh, persisting the MAC address and looking at the, um, the collision thing. So one suggestion is to do some sticky MAC addresses with what we have today. So uh, we could take the existing uh, control plane of, of virtual machines of Kuvert, and we have here a VM controller that looks out on the VM creations. So assuming we have a VM manifest created, it will look at it, and let's say it will, there is no MAC address involved here, right? So it will create the virtual machine. Some random MAC address, in this case A, will be created. And, and um, that's it. This is the, we finished. We created the VM. Maybe this MAC address is duplicate. We don't know, but we don't care at this stage. So after the A is created, the controller sees that uh, the MAC, this is the MAC address, and it can go and update the manifest and say, OK, you created the VM. VM has the MAC A. I'm writing the MAC in the manifest, and from, on, from now on, it will always be there. Even if you shut down and stop the VM, you will have it. So we solved the stickiness problem of, of persisting the MAC address problem. And regarding the, the problem with the duplication, if we, if we also look only at on VMs, that then what we can do is just have a simple controller without this webhook, and we can just look at the manifest and see that uh, there is a MAC address in the manifest, and it will, tr it will just write it to, the, to its pool. So if, it's, if it uh, manages to write it to the pool, register it, or everything is fine. If it doesn't, then it will just react to that. It will say, okay, I cannot register because it's already in use, so I'm going to tell the virtual machine to either stop, I can shut down the link, I can do whatever, Makes sense to in order to resolve the problem. So it's this is in a reactive mode. It's like it, it, things already happened. Maybe it disturbed traffic, but eventually will will react to it. And eventually it will do something in the pod. It's, uh, the manifest will be reflected in the actual virtual machine. Uh, another thing we could do if we want to make it uh, more generic, by the way, the same thing we could do for pods, I didn't specify, uh, say it here, 
but we could do the same for pods unrelated to VMs. Um, but for we could do something smarter, like for example, uh, real switches today, we have SDN switches like OVN, OVS, and we have uh, all kind of vendor switches like Cisco, Juniper, stuff like that. They are already detecting duplicate MAC addresses and you can also query them and talk with them and ask them what is the status. So if we could talk with someone else then, or we could monitor our, um, our system about what's going on, like uh, we could uh, run a TCP dump or some monitoring tool to check all the ARP uh, traffic and see if there are, some are registering with the same MAC address. Also possible. It doesn't matter what's the solution, but that monitor thing can look at the network and once it sees a problem, it will just, it will just go to the, the controller, like in this case, and the controller will go and update the manifest. The same thing we, have, uh, we did to, uh, yes, uh, yes, I don't know why I'm talking about yesterday, but um, the same thing that we did before is to react on the VM itself. Either stop it, stop the link, whatever. Um, that's it most. Do I, I think I finished. Uh, any questions? Yes. Uh, currently it's used, I think it's using, uh, it's in memory. So the way it works is that uh, when it comes up, that controller come, comes up, it will just look all, all over the, the system. That's one all of its uh, disadvantages. It looks all over the pods and VMs that exist, collects them all, puts them into the, register them all, and then from here on it just, just reacts to what happens. Oh, sorry. I, the question was, what was the, database used to save the MAC addresses. Yes. No, it's, uh, sorry. Um, the question is, uh, wh where is the MAC address? Is it uh, somehow registered uh, in the manifest or not? It's specified in the manifest, right? In the configuration. Yeah. So, yeah, so if, 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 the, if the user doesn't, if, if the user does not specify a specific MAC, a specific MAC address, then could make pull that, that uh, project will identify that we just edit itself, like here. Um. Ah, so the manifest, if you, if the cluster is killed, no, it's if the, if any of the components of the system are down, like this is Kubernetes thing because it has in the backend all the manifest that it has is implemented using etcd, which is distributed. So even if things are getting, nodes are getting shut down or stuff like that, it will still be available. That's a Kubernetes given, yeah. Yes. So one of the disadvantages of the, oh. um, the question was uh, that we are not managing, right? We are, we are not managing the um, MAC addresses outside of the cluster, right? So we are not managing the MAC addresses not only from outside the cluster, even in the cluster for pods that are not VMs, we are not managing that, so they can cause collisions. But, and we surely, if, the, if we use, for example, secondary networks, if there are devices on that network in the same LAN, 
and we will not we not even detect it. It's like nothing that we can do. That's only only what I showed in the end. If we want to do something like that, then then we could use some other external tooling to to make it better. But I think this is the the point here is that what I try to make the point is that the chances of this to happen is so low that you should not bother. Probably, I mean. I would be interested to see someone actually having this problem, and then we can talk about it. Any more questions? Yes. Did you ever encounter an application of max versus in production environment, or what do we need to implement it in the first place? So, uh, have I? Have I the question was, have I encountered duplication of MAC addresses in reality, right? So I worked in, I worked in the past with a lot of networking not related to, to this system. And uh, there can be such su things. For example, in a virtual machine, if someone is cloning the virtual machine and the cloning mechanism actually took an existing machine and duplicated its image, then yes, the MAC address will be duplicated because the MAC address many times is written in the configuration of the operation system. So we'll have two virtual machines coming up with the same MAC address, which is a problem. Now, in, in, even in reality, it can happen because you can, many times some, someone can, uh, today there are tools that knows about it, so they will not do it, but in the past you could have just taken, uh, cloned the disk and put it like in 100 machines and distributed it, if they were sitting in the same land, they will just start to collide. But, but as I said, in, in, uh, not in, in the cloud, the, the, the real switches are just blocking your, your traffic, so you will, not, you, will, you will see it in the logs that just block the port. So yes, it can happen, uh, non-intentionally, but there is also an option that we, we, one of the things is that someone can change the, like the, run, someone that runs inside your guest will change the MAC address. That can also happen, but then there are tools like, uh, max, uh, like MAC spoofing, which make, says that if I created a virtual machine, it, it's supposed to have MAC A, it can only get out with MAC A, it cannot get out with MAC B, for example. So that's like a security measurement. Anything else? Okay. So thank you.